Okay, so moving on to tone paper drawing. Um, I'm going to recap a bunch of concepts that we've already gone over. Hopefully, um, this won't be too technically difficult. Uh, I personally think this is my favorite way of drawing. I, I, I have a preference for drawing on tone paper. Um, so, let me show you a couple of these. So, I'm going to just slide through these. So, the background changes and it just becomes one of the values. And, I mean, you could, you know, it's possible to use black paper for a drawing. Um, I, I recommend the tone paper that you use be in this range. You know, you don't want to go too light or too dark. I kind of think these three here are probably the best. Maybe even a little darker is not too bad. Um, so this concept is basically you're going to be using your graphite pencils. So, you're, so, here, so here you go. So the, your paper is this value. So that means anything that you're drawing that is this value, you basically don't have to do anything. It's like you're free your free spot. Nothing has to be done whenever you see this value. But whenever something is darker than this value, you have to... We're going to do this with um, graphite pencils, not charcoal. Um, you have to start darkening it with graphite, and then a little bit darker, and then, you know, as dark as you can go. And then, But then once you go up this side, you have to lighten it with your chalk pencil, not to be confused with your... Um, to be confused with a color pencil. It has to be a chalk or pastel pencil. Sometimes they call it a white charcoal pencil, which is really just a chalk pencil. So again, any, and then, then you have to be able to, um, I'm going to do a demo where I show this. You have to be able to, um, when you're at this value, you're letting some of the paper show through. Some of the paper still shows through, some of the paper shows And then when you're here, you're, you're rubbing on so much chalk or pastel that none of the paper shows through. So the, the values are implying that there's some paper showing, um, even here a little bit. But he, he, conceptually, this is how you need to think about it. Um, you really do not want to be mixing in your white pastel with graphite. I think of it like this. Um, so here, this, this is where our, our starting point. And I think of it, if something is lighter, you add white. Something is darker, you add pencil. It's a, I think of it conceptually is equivalent to um, stepping on your gas or stepping on your brake when you're driving. You never want to um, ever be stepping on both pedals at the same time. Because um, if you are stepping on both pedals at the same time, that means you're confused about what you're doing. You're confused if you're trying to stop or you're trying to go. Same thing with this. If, if you're mixing in um, pastel with your pencil, it's confused about which direction in the the value scale you're trying to go. You're either going um, lighter or darker. There's no need to mix the white and the pencil together because you already have a, a middle gray and it's just making more work for yourself. So this concept, I want you to just burn it in your brain. A shift in value equals a shift in plane. So and I'm not necessarily certain if I'm getting all of you to see this. When some of some of your eggs were drawings were good, some of your eggs drawings I thought were too jerky. So, in the sense of like the planes were jerking around too much. So like, I'll try to get my mouse here. So if we look, let's just look at this like stair step right here. So the light's coming from this direction because you see the brighter side over here. So. Anytime a plane bends away from the light source, it gets darker. So this plane, probably a little bit of this one, are bent towards the light the most. And as you bend a little bit away and a little bit more away, you get darker. And if it's a sharp bend, like a stair step, then you'll see a sharp line. Well, it's really not a line. It's a, sh it's a shift in value, an abrupt shift from one solid value to another solid value this one to this one and if because it's a sh an abrupt shift in plane and if you look over here you'd be like well I don't see any shifts here but yet the, it is getting darker it's because it's a gradual shift it's, it's the, you can think of it as a bunch of tiny tiny little planes you don't see it is shifting but it's shifting so um, gradually on, on a curve that you do see shifting values 
there are planes, like the plane over here is tilted away from the light source, and this one isn't. It's just it's doing it in a gradual curve. So shift in value equals shift in plane. And this is just showing you that if it's a sharp um, shift, the core shadow will look a little, it's like here's a soft shift, the core shadow will be softer and wider. Here it is, it's, a, it's still kind of curved, but it's still a little sharper than the ball. Here's a super abrupt shift, so the core shadow will be, you know, practically a line. So shift in value equals shift in play. So just conceptually, just like burn that concept into your memory. I'm always, whenever I'm teaching figure drawing, I always have to just get students to realize that that's what's going on. Like, you know, the top of the chest here looks lighter because it's directly being hit by the light. And then this little part underneath the chest, it bends away from the light. And then this bends back out towards the light and then gradually bending back away from the light and then back out towards the light again. But, um, and also as we move down here, we're moving away, even over here, moving away from the light source so things get darker. So shift in values are going to give you shifts. I mean, shifts in planes are going to give you shifts in values, but also moving away from the light source will give you um, a shift in value too. I don't want to confuse you too much. <laughs> but like for instance, let's say you're drawing this ball and um, you put polka dots on it, um, like black polka dots. That would be a shift in value, but it's not a shift in plane because it's just, it's like a superficial um, local color shift. And the local color or local value means just what the object is. So this is supposed to just be like a white ball. But like, I would recommend if you were drawing a polka dot ball, I would, I would say ignore the, the superficial surface of the polka dots, draw the shifts in the form, the form values. And then once you get the form values, then draw the, you know, your black polka dots on there. Same concept, just showing you in different ways. So you can see there's, you see three values here because there's three planes. And if there was four, four values, that would be because it would be four different planes shifting away from the light source. The light source was coming from over here. So I want you to just conceptually be thinking about that. Like, you know, you're not going to be drawing, you know, sh abrupt shifts in planes, but everything you're going to be drawing is going to be shifting away into light or shadow. But so just be thinking about this as just like, and it's easy to see on something like this, because you see like if you, now if you just think about that concept of shift in value, you'd be like, okay, Light over here means lights come from over here. Gray over here means this is a plane that's shifting away from the light source. And the dark over here means this, is, this plane is even further bent away from the light source. You know, it's a little different when it comes to cast shadow because the arm is casting a shadow here. So the cast shadow isn't um, a shift in value. It's a cast shadow. Um... I was putting Pontormo. Uh, Watteau, a really nice French painter. Um, I always love his drawings more than his paintings because they, they're a lot more, I don't know, lively. I don't know what the word is. Um, I think I should do some of his drawings before. The, the three color thing he's doing. Really, really mastered this the three color um, pencil drawing. And it, he's doing a, a, like... What I like with this technique is you don't really have to do too much. I mean, he is doing a lot of rendering on the stress, but if you look at over here, there's a lot of empty space, or meaning you see the paper through it, because the the middle value is really um, your middle value is probably going to be the most common value, and it you only have to whenever it needs to get lighter, you just have to dab a little bit of the white in there. This is a Degas, so you can kind of see it's like there's lots of space. Just a little bit of highlights, a little bit of pencil shading, nice like smudging to create some kind of atmosphere. Menzel, um, German painter guy. Um, same thing. You can you can see um, this looks like charcoal to me, but you can see like just little little dabs of white is all he needed for this. He didn't really have to. Um, the fact that he didn't come in here with any white on the coat or the folds over here probably tells me that this is probably a dark coat with not a lot of highlights, probably a matte, not very shiny or reflective. Same guy, Menzel. 
and he, he's doing this, I think, with gouache and some ink, and um, you know, a lot more reflective surface, so he needs a lot more white. Um, and it's it's doing this. I always like these little these paintings that he did because they're um, so the paper he's using is toned this color, and you see it whenever he doesn't um, fill it in completely. You see the paper through. Same thing over here, and which makes perfect sense because when you when you are drawing something with a lot of reflected surfaces, the atmosphere is going to be reflected in it a lot. So it's like a perfect um, combination of technique and um, lighting effect, kind of working hand in hand together. The um, that orange brown is just being seen through, but it looks like it's like a mirror reflecting the the atmosphere into it or onto it. Another Menzel. Just wanted to show you how sometimes all you need is a little bit of restraint. Not always though, because um, sometimes you do have to get more gradual steps to make it work. Here, he didn't need to put any white or pencil over here, I'm assuming because just less detail, less shifts and planes going on over here. Just a little dab of bright white for the collar. But you can kind of see a much softer, smoother, maybe a little smudging up here, a little sharper on the nose, the highlight, and a lot sharper and heavier application of the white pastel. Um, this is Glenn Brown. He's a contemporary painter. Um, he's, he's a weird painter. This is actually a copy of one of Menzel's um, paintings. It's a famous self-portrait Menzel did of his foot. And Glenn Brown's weird because he does a lot of copies of old paintings and he and he kind of like purposefully kind of exaggerates all the texture of the paint. So it's almost like he's not he's not copying the foot. He's copying the brush strokes that Menzel um, used to, to, to illustrate the foot. So it's like all these little swirls are like him trying to like illustrate the dabs of the, the paint strokes. And he's using, um, I think it's some type of a, either acrylic paint or some type of watered down gouache paint on a, in a quill pen. And he's a, creating lines and then with white and then creating lines with black. And then he just lets the, the gray paper be his middle values. So it's a type of hatching. You can do a hatching technique with this, but you either need to get a gel pen or something Glenn Brown again, some some old master. I don't know which old master this is. I don't recognize that. Kind of looks like a, maybe uh, Rembrandt, maybe. I know this is a Rembrandt. And again, he's going in there and like obsessively copying um, the brush strokes in a very peculiar way. I just wanted to show you that it's possible to do a line like hatching with this technique. It doesn't always have to be smooth pastel. Um, I forget the name of this guy. He's an old futurist painter. Um, we're not going to be using charcoal, but I just want to show you that it is possible to, to mix charcoal with this technique. A lot more smudging, a lot more mixing together, which which I usually don't recommend you doing. He's, you can see he's mixing the charcoal with a white in here. It's not really good to do that when you're first learning this technique. And it is possible to also do landscapes. Um, Very simple. I think it's always good to squint down and just to figure out where the light's coming from. See the speckling of light here. It's hard to tell, but it is possible to do any any genre with this technique. It's very painterly. Um, one thing that I, sh I should tell you, like I always, whenever I'm painting, the f most painters I know, they tone their their canvas to some type of middle value. Not always a gray or a brown, but um, sometimes you can use any color. A pastel color will work, but usually the idea is to aim for the va a value that's um, middle, so it's um, it's a little easier to see here. This is a watercolor, so like it's easier to sort of see your values if like the if you if you already have like the the an equilibrium balance of like the values like in the middle. The the I always think of it as like almost like the equivalent of um, it's easier to see your, your your values if you're at a neutral middle. 
it's almost like um, sometimes it's hard to know where your your highlights are when your whole canvas or paper is bright white. Um, it's almost, I almost think of it. It's almost like equivalent of like sitting down at the piano trying to play a song, and someone's playing the highest note as loud as they can. That's basically what when you sit down at a white canvas is like. It's like your it's your brightest value everywhere as loud as it can. It kind of almost throws you off to assess what you're doing. And the the minute you sort of um, tone it to a middle, it it just it's just easier to sort of get your bearings straight and sort things out and find like your equilibrium of where your darks and your lights are gonna go. This is a um, Turner, and he's toning the his watercolor paper, and then letting it dry, and then scraping. This is some scraping out the highlights, and then adding some pen work in there too. This is a painter, or actually she's a sculptor. Her name's Lee Bonacue. Um, I think this is gouache on like almost black paper. I think it's black paper, yeah. You can see the black over there in the corner, or near black. Um, creates a much more dramatic effect when you start with black. You know, the lights just pop a lot more. And she's thinning out the, um, the gouache and letting some of the paper show through. This is Lee Bonacue also. This, the, the, her drawings are always very volumetric. They look like her sculptures using some color pastel also. Which again, this really isn't a class on color, but you know, you could you can always add in a little bit of color. I'm not going to teach you how to mix colors. I guess you'd have to take my intermediate drawing class for that. So here's a, a from life, a figure drawing. And the, the reason I show this one is because I think it's good to see how um, sometimes what is lighter is the background. Um, sometimes students are always focusing on the, the foreground shape, and they're not even realizing, like, you know, the reason why you even see this guy's head is be because there's all this bright light behind him. Or like a, a wall or a board that's being hit by light that looks really bright white. And um, students always do this too, like they'll be drawing an object, they'll put their object that they're drawing on the, in class we have these these kind of like gray, light gray tables, and they're drawing the object, but they don't realize that the, the table is the brightest thing because it's it's like a off gray, it's, it's actually it's almost near white, not quite. And I always tell them, you have to like lighten up the table. The table is what's the lightest thing. The object that you're drawing is actually has very little lights on it. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes it's, it's the background you need to lighten up or darken. It's, it's dark for her. Um, another figure drawing done from life. Just sometimes simple hatching is all you need. Um, but I want you to just keep in mind how... Um, the, the use of the, the, the empty space, the paper, is used. It's like white pastel, paper, pencil, paper, pencil. I'll show you a better example of this towards the end. Uh, it's a Rico Lebrun. Very quick, fast sketch. All my, I, my favorite sketchbooks that I draw in are have a tone gray and a tone brown, my, my two favorite, because it's just, it's so easy to just quickly um, get your values in when you have your paper already middle. So here's a really, really dark paper. So like the darker the paper, that just means the more white um, chalk or pastel you have to put down. And I like how the, again, no, no eyeballs are drawn. So a lot of times just when you go into shadow, you don't see any information, so don't draw the information if you don't see it. Same thing here. I like this example. So darker paper, a lot. We have to sort of skim out a lot more gray, and you kind of see. And as you as you turn away from the light source, you got to let some of the paper show through. Paper show through, and now here just just paper only. Now you got to start putting in some pencil to get darker. So it's just like pl shifting planes, shifting planes. And a nice handling of the hair. You don't have to draw every single hair to make hair look like hair. 
So here's an example of a much lighter paper. So the lighter the paper, the less pastel you have to put down of the white pastel. So you can kind of see just all you really need the white pastel is here for the, the highlights. And there's maybe a little in between here, kind of smudged out. So let me just go back so you can see the difference. Dark paper, more chalk. Lighter paper, less chalk. And it's possible to tone your paper with like watercolor or even like a, a ink, an ink that you dilute and just let it dry. Um, and again, like it's, it, it's, it's amazing how, like there's almost no rendering in this drawing, but yet it has such a clear sense of form. Like it feels very 3D with like hardly any rendering. You can almost like count the number of marks that are in here. It's very few. But just a clear sense of, of light. And again, pay attention how it transitions, like pastel, paper, graphite pencil. Do you notice like it's like again what I said earlier, like they're not they're they're not mixing in. It's like here's your neutral. Either you have to go light or you have to go dark. And you, you don't you're not mixing the two together. And like the reflected light is just the paper. Most students are always tempted to come into the, the reflected light area and like use the pastel. That makes no sense because this side is getting direct light, but the, the, this is getting indirect light. So it's no way it's going to be the same brightness as this over here. The reflected light is anyway, not going to be as bright. Much more smooth transitions. And again, this doesn't look like it's being smudged, but you can smudge with um, your finger or your stump or paper towel or whatever you're using. And here you can see, you might be fooled into thinking that this, this reflected light, remember I said how you shouldn't use the reflected light, the, the white pass down the reflected light? This is actually because there's a secondary light source coming in and lighting this up. So this is receiving direct light, oops, direct light from this side and another secondary light source from over here. That's why there's white pastel over here. So this is the, the final image, or several final of the final images, but I want you to see this technique of not um, being clear about keeping your whites pastel and your paper and or the graphites separate. So let me just zoom in so you can see white, paper, pencil. White paper pencil it's like that's the shifting you can see, so it's like this is, it's curved so it's like lighter middle paper and if it was more gradual they could have put in more steps in there but again you can see paper white pencil graphite pencil paper white pencil paper graphite pencil i'm just trying to show you like it's like you, you, you kind of have to keep them separate you, you don't want to be taking your um, graphite pencil and mixing it in with the, um, the, the white because, again, that means you're kind of confused. Either you're pushing on the, the, the brake or you're pushing on the gas. Or you're doing nothing. You're just staying at the value that you're at of the paper. So push on the gas or push on the brake. Gas, nothing, brake. Those are your options. Okay. That's it for now. I'm going to do another um, technical lecture.